Warning, the following program contains helpful information about your motorcycle's electrical system, really crappy but violent special effects, explosions, ill-advised electrical tomfoolery, and snark. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Fortnite Mechanic number 46, and today we've got a T7 in the pro shop. Let's get five electrical tips from our guru. Hey, 46, I think I found your ABS issue. Come on over and have a look. Okay, so what's going on here? This is how we measure voltage without actually damaging a connector. So what I've done is I've slipped these safety pins in underneath the rubber gasket, uh, okay. up against the edge of the pin, so it won't actually damage anything. Now how do I make a little test lead like that? Oh, we just take one of your random little safety pins that I got lying around right here. And say if you want to connect a wire to it to make a remote measurement on your dash while you're riding, you just thread that piece of wire through the safety pin, mm. give that a little pull, and I've got a connector. I can solder that, shrink to a bit, cut the other end off if you like, and then all you do is slide that carefully up in that connector without damaging a single thing, mm -hmm. and you've got a single line. And that doesn't mess with the connection or anything in there, it's totally yeah. safe, wow. Let's talk about, for example, the problems you'd have with your throttle. Ah yes, my throttle performance issues. I've been feeling some inconsistency in the low end throttle response and I can't figure out why. Sometimes it feels like it sort of surges out of nowhere. Daniel set up a voltmeter and an oscilloscope and hooked them up to this demo version of a throttle position sensor. So as this guy moves back and forth, it is just picking up the variable voltage along this coil. Okay. And that coil basically gets five volts on one side, zero on the other, and as we wait back and forth, it's gonna pick up that change in voltage. And that change in voltage is how your ECU knows your throttle is at a different position. A voltmeter will show us the instantaneous voltage of the sensor, which makes a momentary change hard to see. But the oscilloscope records the voltage over time and displays it on a graph, so we can see when and where any change occurs. We should see a nice, clean, gentle rise in voltage. We can see a little blip. So that blip is a bad connection inside here. And that's probably just from where on the spot on the wiper you're most commonly riding in? Exactly. So the ECU is kind of analogous to the voltmeter. It's not fast enough, right? Well, the ECU is plenty fast. It's just not smart enough. So when it sees that little spike in that voltage, it just thinks you've goosed the throttle and it's gonna dump a bunch of fuel in there to compensate. Yeah, man, the scope is definitely the move. It's just so nice to be able to visually see the signal on a graph. And I know that some modern European bikes are moving toward CAN bus signals, which of course communicate via CAN bus data line. But the only way to diagnose problems with a system like that is to steal one of these dealership scanning tools or just buy a new sensor, swap it out, and hope that that was the problem, which is just kind of a letdown. What, let it down? Hi, I'm Fortnite Mechanic number 47, and uh, we've hired a millwright for the day, so let's check out four of his pro tips. Oh, hey, 47. So that taillight problem you had, turns out is a bad ground. You wanna come have a look? Let's check sure. it out. Sure, okay. Okay, so my taillight is just super dim, and when I hit the brakes, they turn off. Uh, everything's connected, I don't know what the problem is. What's going on? Okay, so let's confirm the complaint. You guys wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay. So we see it's dim. Get the brakes. Get the brakes. Lights off. Like goes out. Yeah. Okay, so let's pop it out. I've already loosened the screws off. Okay. And we'll slide this guy back here. We got our handy dandy test light. We grab it to the rack. Okay. I know this rack's grounded, I've already checked this. The first thing I'm gonna do is find some power. Just make sure that that test light does illuminate from something. So here we go. I'm okay. back probing inside here. Yep. We've got that. And we'll back probe inside the ground to make sure, hey, what do we have, what's going on here? Okay, so our test light is kinda dim, but it's on, and then we exactly. have full brightness on the tail. Because we have an old school light bulb test light, yeah. but a modern LED light, this needs so little power that that's grounding through the bulb and that's completing our circuit. So we know that that ground isn't flowing power properly. So the old school test light with the incandescent bulb can dim, so it can show you a weak current. That means there's still a use case. There are some modern LED test lights that have integrated voltmeters for showing that low current, but as features go up, so does price, and it's often at the cost of reliability. Okay, 47, you know you got a bad ground. Why yeah. don't you go find exactly where that is? Here. Thanks. I got um, something to do back here. Sure, okay. Thing's pretty cool. Grounded. Huh. Hi, I'm Fortnite Mechanic number 48, and uh, to be honest, 
I don't really like the vibes in here. Uh, let's just do three quick electrical tips from an expert and we'll leave safely. If you ever fry a connector and can't find a replacement, Daniel's gonna make sure you know how to make a custom one so you don't have to replace your entire harness. We start by stripping our wires to fit our pins, and Daniel likes to step down a few sizes with his crimpers. It's always nice to just go from one to the next to the next and make a really nice click. And that's it, you've got a rock solid connection. Then we slide on some shrink tube right up to the tip of the pins and hit them with a heat gun. The female end of the stock connector serves as a mold, so we need a mold release agent, and Vaseline works great. Daniel seems to have uh, jars of it all over the place. Make sure to get all the way in the bottom. That's extremely critical, because if your silicone sticks, you're gonna have a bad time trying to get this apart again. Now Daniel plugs the pins into the unit, and when you're actually doing this on a bike, test it. Because once we pump it full of silicone, the configuration of the pins is locked. We'll mix up just a little blob of JD Weld, and all we're trying to do is hold the three wires together, mm -hmm. just because the silicone doesn't always grab everything too well, so that if you go to pull it out later, something can kind of slip or move. Now, if you ride to compensate for something, use a tape dam to extend the male end of your connector for a little more room to grip it, because for you, every millimeter matters. Now we inject our silicone, and it's important to start from the bottom and work your way up, and make sure that there's no voids in the material. Once it's cured, just peel off the tape and there you have it, a custom connection using high-grade silicone. The fumes from this stuff, by the way, are pretty toxic, so Daniel wouldn't let me hang out for too long. Come on. All right, so you showed me how to fix a bad connection, but what's this? Well. This is gonna show us how to find bad wiring. Okay. So here we're looking at a starter system. Right, this looks familiar. I've got my starter switch on my handlebar and that's running to my starter relay, which is really just a giant switch inside that little beer can there. And then that's gonna send power from the battery to the starter motor and then uh, that's gonna drive the piston. And then of course we've got this angle iron here that represents our frame, that's our ground. This is our complete starter circuit, right? Yep. And if everything's working as it should, when I press the starter, everything goes. Exactly. Okay. So the question is, what if we have a bad piece of wiring somewhere? Mm -hmm. Let's take an example of, let's say we had a bad connection between here, between the starter switch and our starter relay. So now I want to diagnose what happens if we got no power somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's start with something simple, test light. Lights, it works. Start probing along your circuit going, hey, okay, I got power here. Okay. Don't have power there. That's suspicious. Let's start poking around. So we've got power to our switch. We have power. It stays on when I'm pressing the button. Here's the other side of our switch, the next place to go. The switch is working. I've got power. Well, what about further down the line? I've got no power. If you've got power going to one side of the wire but not to the other, you know you've got a break. So to test that, we're gonna take our handy little jumper wire here and we're gonna clip this guy on here and we'll clip this guy on here. And all of a sudden it works. Okay, so we've touched on using a basic test light. What happens if there is high resistance inside that cable? First, we had a broken connection, so a, bro a, a failed piece of wiring. Yes. And now we've got a faulty one, so that would be maybe um, too small of a gauge or it's old. Exactly, too small of a gauge, old and crusty. Okay. Uh, there's only a couple strands left. So if I actually test ohms down that wire, mm -hmm. it's still good. It's going to say, hey, there's continuity here, it's going to pass. But you, saw this, you put 50 amps through that circuit from your starter, mm -hmm. and it's not going to work. This bulb in this circuit right here, that doesn't represent a headlight or a tail light or anything like that. This is just an example of loss of energy through light, in this case, that, that bulb. Exactly. Okay, so this is a, a faulty connection. Yes. Got it. So if we want to test that, start your battery, make sure you've got, you know, 12 and a half volts, good solid connection. And rather than measuring positive to negative, like everyone tells you to do, mm -hmm. go ahead and clip on a positive. Now go to the positive under your starter. Okay. So, you're looking for loss down that starter circuit. Okay. A good rule of thumb is no more than 0.1 volt loss per connection and about 3% down your wiring. So realistically, if you're losing more than a volt to your starter, you have a serious problem. Okay. And if we press the button here, we've got eight volts of loss and this thing, come on, start. It's not gonna start. Okay. 
So how do we isolate that? Mm. We're gonna start to move this meter around and say, I wanna connect power at the starter relay and maybe go to the battery and look at my loss. We hit the button. Nope, there's only 0 0.5 volts there, 0 0.05, it's fine. Okay. Keep probing around. So if my connection here, I go to the starter, eight volts, that's a problem. Let's check across the starter relay. Nope, that one's good. Let's keep going. Starter relay to starter, eight volts lost down a single wire. Yeah. If I do an ohms test down this wire, mm -hmm. it still has a little tiny wire that will pass enough current to pass the ohms test. So there is a connection being made. Exactly, there's okay. a connection. But it's not a good one. No, and as soon as you put 50 amps mm -hmm. down that cable, it cooks. So this same ohms test, I use it to fix this big power supply your boss sent over. Check this out. I'm okay, man. I, I think I'm okay. Hi, I'm Fort 9 mechanic number 49, and I'm Put it down. getting the hell out of here. Hey, 49, need a boost? No. Yeah, yeah, I do. You sure I can jump a T7 with a Tundra? Yeah, you can start a bike with any vehicle. The trick is not to have the engine running. If the voltage is too high, you can fry that little tiny bike battery. Okay. Hold on there, 49. Why? Don't connect too quickly. Now this battery can cook if you're connected to the truck too long. Okay. So you want, you want to do is connect, start, disconnect. As quick okay, as you can. so just connect to the negative, then start and get right off it. Exactly. Good job, buddy. You've really come a long way. Thanks, Daniel. But uh, if you're out in the bush and you don't have a Toyota and jumper cables handy, try one of these. It's an anti-gravity lithium-ion restart battery. It saves 20% of its energy, so it jumps itself if you press that little button here. I also installed a Kimpex voltmeter on this bike, so I can check my voltage in real time when I turn my bike on and see how close I am to ultimately being totally screwed out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you know, 49's kind of a lucky number around the office. I think I'm gonna be around for a long, long time. Hello, this is Ryan. I'm sorry I can't come to the phone right now. Leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hey Ryan, it's Daniel. I've been running those test scenarios on the clones you sent in for repair, but they keep dying on me. Give me a call when you have a sec.